We've arrived at the halfway mark of the Super Foiler Grand Prix breakthrough series and we're on the Gold Coast for the final day of racing. It's double points delight on a supercharged Sunday and Jimmy, the gap between the Super Foilers is really starting to shrink. Yeah, we had a few teams really raise the bar yesterday and a few teams come unstuck in the tough Gold Coast conditions. So everyone's had a lot to think about. There's no room for error now. You need to bring your A game. Well, the report card was high for our Saturday racing. Let's take a look and see how it all unfolded. On a blisteringly hot day on the Gold Coast, pavement was late to the party. Oh, we're racing. What? And bounced at the entrance in the oh, opener. What's happening with pavement? It looks like they're in a bit of trouble. Have they clipped something? In the water lock. In the water. They're completely chicken winged up there. They're not going anywhere. She wasn't the only super foiler on the wrong side of the law. ID intranet also logging off. No room! More trouble with these markers. Jimmy, what's in the water today? And this is the tide, Nick. This is three knots of tide pushing them up the course. In a location celebrated for its theme parks, it was wet and wild for Ian Jensen on board the series front runner. Oh, we oh see God. Coops is having a horrible time. He's gone for a swim and he's actually let go there. Yes, super gnarly situation that one. You can see there's those appendages hanging down, the rudder in the centre board and your worst nightmare is coming off the boat and hitting one of them. Well, I had a little malfunction in my trap. It sort of uh, half broke and so I was um, head down near the rudder and legs above my head and I was sort of still hanging on the boat but sort of head dragging in the water. Um, and I was trying to work out the best way to get off the boat without hitting anything, really. But um, in the end, I just sort of bit the bullet and unhooked and uh, cleared the rudder, which was good. And the boys came around and got me. The race eventually scrapped. The race may have actually been red flagged. It may have been abandoned due to all the chaos. The second Saturday skirmish and again a problem at the start for Steve Thomas and the pavement trio. A meal of it as well as they drift towards our race boat there as well. It's going to have to be some serious fending otherwise we're going to have more entanglements. Oh my goodness, what is happening today for pavement? The fight taken to Euroflex in the next. Well, I think we got him here. Marco thinks he may have them, that's exciting. Luke Parkinson sending Tech 2 all the way to the line in a jaw-dropping finish. And it's a close one, oh my goodness! We've lost both of them overboard. Maybe he was trying to slingshot them over the finish to try and get them there first. Bail, bail, bail. I thought we had him. I had a bit of a misinterpretation on the ruling there. I thought we had right of way, um, but we had to give him room, which we did. And uh, yeah, I think Nathan had to change his underpants after that. Parko sort of ejected and was in the water waving his hands around saying protest. And uh, you know, I might have told him to go away politely, dreaming. But uh, no, we all had a good laugh when we got in and um, it was exciting. A second between first and second, and the same margin in the battle for third and fourth. Another really tight one here, and CJ from the heavens. Well, he's back, baby. More close quarter combat in the final race of the day. And this is where it gets hot and heavy as well. They've called protests there. Bill's trying to call water on the boundary. Euroflex trying to get him on starboard. That was waved away, and by the second marker, the racing again came together. The time's level in the race for second. And a great gate there from Pavement. They've really come back into the contest. There was a close call at the start of the fifth leg as record point looked to thread the needle. There he goes, up inside. Oh, my goodness. Those boys have just hit. Ed Powers has literally just hit. They are touching. And they are blowing up accordingly. I need room, I need room, wait in! Oh, I'm a close there! Ed Powers with too close a look at Phil Robertson's machine. It doesn't come any closer than that. As record point Scotsman found himself isolated from his teammates. Oh man, overboard on record point, that's Neil Hunter the Bowman. But again, the dream team dazzled. Powering to the line for another golden day on the Superfoiler circuit. And they've got plenty to boast about. That's six from the Superfoiler Supremo. Checking out the regatta scoreboard after six races here in the Gold Coast, and it's Euroflex again with a clean sweep on 36 points. But here is where it gets interesting that battle between Tech 2 and Record Point, 24 points each. And Jimmy, how about that? Our last three boats just four points separating them. Couldn't get any closer than that. 
Yeah, look, they've all had a few issues so far and been battling with the really tough conditions out there. So, you know, double points today. They're both all going to have to up their game and we'll see who can do that today. You've mentioned the tough conditions. It's certainly a lot windier than yesterday. Whose favour will that play into? I think that could go into Pavement's favour. They've done a little bit more time in the boats and they showed us in Geelong that they're happy in the breeze. So we could see a big move from them today up the leaderboard. Well, as long as they can manage the current, that seemed to be the big issue for those guys. Jack McCartney, what is the latest? G'day, Nick. Great to be out here. The Gold Coast waterway is stunning today. We've got a steady 16 knots from the southeast, so a little bit more pressure than yesterday, but the same direction. Uh, we're expecting it to build a little bit, but at this point it's just been a nice steady 16 knots. Uh, we've got a little bit more current than yesterday, so between three to four knots, so that's going to make it very tricky again. But uh, great conditions. The boats have their little mainsails on, so that'll make it a little bit easier for them to manage around the course. But they're already belting around uh, everywhere at the moment, so expect some action. Jack, it's Tess here. Look, given the teams have now had two days of racing on this water space, they're familiar with the conditions. Do you think we'll see the bar lifted on the water today? I think having the experience of yesterday and Friday, they've now got their minds really switched into where the current's running hardest, uh, what part of the course to stick to, uh, what the obstacles are, so they're more familiar. So I think late, late yesterday afternoon, we saw a lot of the teams doing some excellent jibes and manoeuvres and they were getting around the track really evenly. So I think today you can expect it to be quite even around the racetrack and that gap between Euroflex is going to be narrowed for sure. Thanks, Jack. Not long to go for the opener here on our Double Points Sunday Supercharge. Going in reverse like this, ball out on Starbin will easily lay. Um, and then it'll, we'll go into that boundary, kind of call for room attack. Four point, obviously, off the line. 15 seconds to preparatory. What's our starting plan? Are we on port? Yeah, I think so. Nine, yeah. Go on, guys, eight, get into it. Yo, seven, let's do it. Six, Five. Same as yesterday, up the line if we can on the pin. Yeah, almost left. I don't think you'll get one and in, but you're probably only going to be three, aren't you? Coming up. Awesome to see the different preparations from the super foilers as they get ready for double points. We're lighting the fuse after this. Queensland ready to deliver the goods. The first of our double points race is just seconds away as we see the field getting ready. Happy to go somewhere here? Yes. OK, here we go. That's our front runner, Euroflex, ready to pounce. Where's the boundary? Getting their final positions before the start. Cano on, lots of cano. Looks like a close field. Going very fast here. Pretty bunched in. Slow, slow, slow. We may or may not get in here. 30 seconds. Got a feeling we're not. Close to a shutout from Parker. A lot of wind up the racetrack. Should be okay. Slow, slow. Everyone's setting up on port. The wind's left. And after missing the last start, the pavement boys look like they'll manage to make this one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So both racked up really tight here. You can see the orange flag and the checkered mark. That's the line. And there you go, Euroflex. Really punched on that line. They've got an awesome start. And Cleanmate as well, gotten away nicely under the pack. And she's got her own breeze. She can sail wherever she likes. Great start for Olivia Price there, Tess. Yeah, great left pressure here. You can see the boats to windward. They'll get a longer run out towards the boundary. The boats on the left putting the bow down, really building speed here. Clean Maid and Tech 2, both nice lured positions. Up. Reaching the boundary line on board Clean Maid. Two. One. Harry Morton, the bow on Clean Maid. Awesome 49er sailor. Lots of match racing experience. Pulling the foil so down. Really short on starboard, so we have space. And there's that mystery word again, space. It's all about the amount of room we have here on the Gold Coast, constantly on their mind. 
You can see Euroflex and Tech 2 trying to sail a high mode there just to maximise their distance before they reach the boundary. And they've reached that boundary line, rolling into attack here, and it's going to be a short run on starboard. They're almost sailing an angle straight across the course with this wind direction. We've got ripping current out on the water, pushing against the wind, helping them get upwind on this track. And pavement comes scything through at the moment and splashes down for her efforts as well. Yeah, so pavement have got a really interesting technique here. And we saw it yesterday. They've got their both main foils down, sailing upwind, which is something we have not seen yet at all. So these guys are running with this new scenario. And uh, basically, it gives them a higher angle upwind. And they can foil a little earlier, similar to the downwinds. And uh, it's interesting. They made a power for the last race yesterday, but before that, I'm not so sure about it. You can see here, they're saying that higher angle than the rest of the fleet, and they will be a little slower. So an interesting trade-off by them. We'll see how long they can make it stick here. Yeah, around the red, and we're attacking pretty soon after. Euroflex with clear communication on board. They've got a 60 metre lead to ID with Tech 2 in third. Happy any time. And record point in fourth ahead of Pavement with Cleanmate in sixth at the moment. Record point, sailing fast. These guys would be travelling 20 to 25 knots on the upwind and ID tacking there on the final lay line. This is the top mark coming into screen. They've made great gains on the upwind. Tech 2 here. If they can get in front of ID, they'll be able to tack in and make it around the mark. A lot of breeze on with this bear away. They haven't quite done that. They haven't shut the door. ID still can peek through. And it looks like Paul Campbell James Anytime, Gopes. has done just that. I can't give you a whole fight. ID have done a great bear away. They've sailed into second place and they're smoking it on the downwind. They've got a nice inside lane there on Euroflex. This is Olivia Price opting for the sunglasses while on the tiller there. You can see she's got her hand on that back button, controlling the lift in the foils. Critical, these guys are max pace coming into the top mark. So they can foil for the bear away. And this is close. She really is nipping at the stern of pavement there. As our front four stretch their legs further up the broad water, you can see there really isn't much in it between first and sixth at the moment. Less than 200 metres separating the two ends of this fleet. Yeah, for sure, the fleet can taste blood. There's been a few finishes now where Euroflex is only one by one second and they're not going to have another bar of that. And they're all ganging up on them now. And you can see Tech 2, awesome foiling job right in front of Euroflex there. Trim, trim. Trim on, trim on. And record points just rolled over as well. Nice boys. This is like a mob mentality at the moment, trying to shut out Euroflex and Tech 2 and record point working in tandem to keep the series leader staring at their wake as Euroflex builds. Oh, a big round up on board Euroflex. Goobs, you all right? Good. Okay, we'll, we'll back down to you. It's Goobs again. Goobs has gone over again, so a big, big cavitation there on their foils. Foils just losing grip, spinning out, and, and Nathan just completely losing traction, losing all his steering. And losing all their race position as well. Euroflex in fourth, and they may fall further behind. Go, boys! Get off the course! Ease, 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 Phil Robinson there blowing up Deluxe. This is the moment it all went wrong for Euroflex, like a shopping trolley with a wobbly wheel. They were just going in the wrong direction fast there, and Ian Jensen's on the wrong end of it again. They had so much speed there coming from behind. They were about to overtake record point and had nowhere to go but to roll into a roundup. This is going to be a unique angle from our boom cam there. We see Ian Jensen flying off and Glenn Ashby not far behind. Absolutely, that's a huge mistake. You could see there they've broken some of their elastics on their trapeze wires, so that's going to hinder them for the whole rest of the race. I don't like to comment on weight there, but I do know Ian Jensen, according to our Dexer imagery, is sitting at about 14.5% body fat. That might have something to do with the wire snapping there, Tess. Yeah, Nick, look, they've all rigged up secondary lines on the trapeze, so they'll be able to reconnect them pretty quick and get back into this race. But you can see ID here. They've just given this everything and maintained a great lead on the yeah. downwind as they come into the bottom yeah, gate. We're bloody slow, high speed spin, big swings. 
Oh, back, sorry, my bad. Big swings. So there you can hear, hear Phil calling for big swings. Yeah. Means they're coming in hot Phil, to the mark. Phil, they got good pressure. Big swing, no ding. Just leave the boards down. Yep. And just try and untangle the mess. And I'll just keep trying to sail it. Yep. It is a mass okay, mess back there for Euroflex. Yeah. They've got some tidying up to do, some housework, as ID look to exploit their mistake to the maximum. This could be the chance we've been waiting for for a breakthrough win. Pretty I'm probably going right. Meanwhile, it sounds like Phil's having just as tough a day on record point. Wait forward, wait forward. Two, one. How's this going to play out? Will Euroflex come back? Stick around to find out. Double points on the line right now. Yeah, twist. Wait forward, wait forward. Two, one, go boys. That's Phil Robertson on record point. He's wanting to make the most of Euroflex's mistake. Let's go, And go get your main. A lot of preparation needed coming into that bottom mark. This is a great little passage from Clean Made. They've managed to come from last into fourth position. They're sailing really well. Here comes pavement, though. Steve's coming straight off our arse here. Three, two. See how painful it is for these teams as they underlay these marks. They have to go slower and slower, and then the tide just starts pulling harder against them, and they're almost getting just dragged away from that mark. And as soon as they round, they're just going sideways really fast, and it's just hard to find that groove. This is such a tough racetrack out here. You can see that short distance from the bottom mark out to the spectator boats where they've got a tack in the lay. And look at the breeze up the course. It's 18 to 22 knots. This is right on the boat's limit here. And with the narrow course, so many manoeuvres, these guys would be pretty close to sailing the boat to the red line. Three boards up to the tack, I think. It's the two red machines in the red line at the yep. moment, Tess. Three. Now, ID two. have got great pace on the upwind. You can see Turning. these current lines as they sail towards the top mark. There's such big right. depth differences and current directions there just making it so tough for these guys. Haven't said this all series, Tess. Euroflex in last position. The Dream Team having a nightmare run out there at the moment as our leader ID has nearly 800 metres ahead of the Euroflex. This seems like they won't be able to recover from here. Okay, I'm coming up. Look, they've had a good run in the racing so far, and this isn't a position we've seen them in before, but with these tough conditions, anything can happen to you out there. And up at the top mark, Tech 2 have overlaid. They've got to bear away and sail below the mark. We got it, we got it. We're on the mark. We're going to be on the mark. Just let it mark. chill. That's through. That's around the mark, right? Yep. That's around the mark. Back to Jim. So they've bounced over the top of it there, Tech 2. They've stamped on it. Have they picked okay, something up, up though? An ID gets smoothly yep. around yep. there. That's you, Aiden. It's caught on the caught on the rudder, caught on that T section there. Aiden's jumping in the water, Nick. Which side, Pet? Which side? This is unbelievable. For the second day in a row, more drama. Which side, brother? Involving uh, these floating obstacles that we're using for our markers and the boys. Boards or what? He's Jim. It's almost like a red rag to a bull. Careful, mate. Just careful, careful. He's crab. He's on crab. That current pushing them up winds, not helping with getting off the mark. Oh, they've got to get the chain off his mark. And they're blowing up there as well, Luke is. Yeah, so you can see all that choppy water on the right of the screen. That's the tide line, and that's where the tide's really going to start ripping. There'll be deep water there. And the current will be running faster there than anywhere else. Two. And record oh, point. Go. Setting up power, for their power, bear power, away. Power, power, power. Big trims. Big trims. You need yeah. a lot of speed coming into that top mark to be able to get that boat to bear away. Yeah. Side toe, please. Side toe. Yes! And with Steve Thomas's record this week in that current, I was worried pavement might have tangled up too. So massive issues here. You can see Tech 2 is being blown almost downwind. The tide's sweeping them downwind. They have this T angle on the bottom of their rudder, and the chain on the mark will be wrapped around that. So it can definitely cause some damage, and it's just extremely hard to get off.
They're trying to figure out how to get this off as quick as they can and minimise the damage to the foils. Race teams, race teams, this is race committee. The race is abandoned. The race is abandoned. The positions at the first gate will be the result of race number seven. But I don't think it's caused to abandon ship just yet for Tech 2, although I did see Sam dive in to try and help the salvage effort there as pavement race on here. I think a lot of these guys are going to be surprised with that decision. They will still get the position of where they were in the race when the race committee decided to abandon, so a result will be given. They can't... They cannot score them anything more than a fifth or a sixth. If they've taken the top mark, they're DNF. Yeah. Phil Robertson not too happy about the decision to de abandon at the top mark. I imagine ID won't mind though. This will be their first win ever in the super foiler circuit. Paul Campbell James, the British Bulldog, biting through and tasting success. Pretty happy there. Fang Warren, Ed Powers, CJ. And Mick Dundee trying to cut things free. You call that a knife? I think you're going to need a bigger one there. They're in a bit of trouble. I think they're going to need bolt cutters, Nick, to get through that chain. Yeah, pretty nasty there. This will be a nice moment for the ID Superfoiler. Their sponsors have come out to the Gold Coast to cheer them on from the side of the sand, and they'll have something to cheer about, as we can see Sam, the everyman, doing his best MacGyver and getting it clear. I'm gutted that's abandoned. Is Phil still teeing off there on record point? Well, we're going to mow him and down, I reckon. Yeah, extremely tough situation there, and Luke Parkinson is pretty good in those sort of situations. He's the kind of guy you want around. He's always got a level head. He's always straight into fixing the problem, not blowing up at anyone, just trying to fix the situation as quick as he can. An impressive work from ID. They seem to keep pushing the boat really hard. They don't have a conservative approach at all. It's just crazy out here, isn't it? It's just stupid. Yeah. Like, if I... I was trying to get up above him, and I'm like... To, like take him out with our lured hull. It's just stupid being out here with this much wind. Hey? Yeah, so you can see a big chunk out of the foil about a foot down from the boat. And uh, good thing that it's yeah, nice and high. The lower Pretty down that it is uh, towards that T section, that's what we're going to be flying on for the majority of it. So, and Nick up that high in the foil is not too much of an issue. Just not sure how much damage he's going to have down low on the crucial part of the wing there. Jimmy, you're talking about damage to Tech 2. We heard that was almost some damage on Euroflex as well. It sounds like Phil Robertson wants to do some damage in the boat park with the way the points were handed out. How on earth are we going to make sense of that? Well, we've got to go to Jack. Jack, please explain how the points will unfold. So the, the way that this works is that we finish with the first gate rounding. So the positions that they went through the bottom marks is what stands, and that definitely counts. And we have a new winner. Jack, I know you put some money on the line there for the winner, the first person to topple Euroflex. What are you looking at? What's the bill? It's actually one of our uh, close allies, Andrew Coppin. He's put 500 big ones on the bar for the ID team. So thank you, Coppo. That's something to cheers about, although the celebrations look pretty sedate. I imagine they'll kick off a bit later on. Jack, how did it look to you out on the water there? Was it as close as it seemed from up here? That was pretty good. There's really tricky conditions again. And uh, it was good to see the fleet, you know, ahead of the Euroflex. So it just shows everyone's improving very quickly. So stay tuned. The competitive spirit of these guys is just so outstanding. And we saw in that race how badly they want to push to get a race win in. And Euroflex, they're re-rigging their trapeze lines. They're going to need to get the boat ready for the next race. First, ID internet, 12 points. Second, Tech 2, 10 points. Third, nah. record point, 8 points. Fourth, clean made, 6 points. Fifth, pavement, 4 points. Sixth, Euroflex, 2 points. A look of bewilderment there. Race committee, this is record point. Just uh, to let you know, We'll probably lodge a red flag protest on the results there because I don't think it's fair that Tech 2 gets scored two points for pulling a mark over. They would not have finished that race. Uh, record point, I completely agree with you, but that is how the rules are written. <coughs> Copy that, race committee. Next time we're winning a race, we will take up a mark. Over. <laughs>
Good idea, Phil. So we'll take it on, mate. <laughs> oh, it's good to see Phil and the boys making light of the situation, and they may have found a loophole there, Nick. That could be a new strategy teams might use going forward. Perhaps this is how it'll stand in the history books. ID Intranet, 5 minutes 28, the world's shortest race, but they've got it there. And Tech 2, one of the great jailbreaks of our time. Luke Parkinson with second place there, ahead of an angry Phil Robertson, who will no doubt be smiting, but Jack's with someone who is celebrating. Jack, who have you got? Thanks, Nick. Yeah, here with CJ. Mate, well done. First winner other than the Euroflex. Yeah, it's nice to beat them. It took enough time, but it's nice oh, to beat them. Yeah, no, that's great. That's pretty tricky conditions out there. Yeah, it was, yeah. Obviously, that second lap, it all piped up a bit. We underlaid the, uh, we underlaid the committee boat. Uh, sorry, the wind remark, and... Um, had a bit on at the top mark, but not quite as much on as Tech 2. So yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it was good. But that first run was where we made it all. You know, we did well at the, we did well on the upwind, but um, yeah, we actually did really well on the downwind, lifting the board up and just going one Watch foil, just yeah. going one foil for that um, for that starboard across the middle. And I'm not sure, quite sure the top speed, but in the mid 30s, yeah, yeah. it felt pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. It looked quick. We better let you get out of here. This is atrocious. So yeah. good luck in getting in. Yeah. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Great result there for ID Intranet as we see some impressive work out on the water. I did think we might have seen some water works from Phil Robertson at one stage there, but he's going to let his sailing do the talking on these remarkable waterways. He'll be gunning for glory, or perhaps he'll just look to take out a mark. We'll find out which next. Copy that race committee. Next time we're winning a race, we will take up a mark. Over. Emotion swelling here on the Gold Coast. Nathan Outeridge on Euroflex also, no doubt, with something to say about it. It's pretty fresh. Um, you know, we're seeing probably 20, a bit more than 20 at times, but the biggest issue is this current. We've got three knots of current ripping out and um, it really compresses the fleet on the downwind because you're sort of struggling to make progress. And as you saw with a compressed fleet like that all jiving close together, uh, all it takes is the boat ahead of you to slow down and, uh, you know, you have to do a wipeout like we did and, you know, just happy Goobs and Glen are OK. So the, the biggest issue here is basically the boat speed? Yeah, the boats are incredibly fast um, and they need quite a lot of space when they're going that quick. And, you know, with the current going against us, um, those downwinds sort of, you don't get as far down the boundaries as you want to get and so you end up just jibing at each other. And that's fine when you're doing sort of low, mid-20s and you've got control, but when you're in the 30s and you're just hanging on for dear life, it's, it's less than ideal. So what actually happened there where you um, rounded up to Miss Phil? You looked like you also got a gust and accelerated at the same time. Yeah, well, the wind's a bit left off the land and so it's a bit puffy on starboard and uh, we were coming up behind Phil and it looked like he sort of went down a bit of the swell that's rolling in here and sort of slowed down a bit. So Glennie's like, we'll go above and just at that moment we get a puff. So he smoked the sheet and he's basically eased as far as he can and I can see Phil's head in my bow and I'm like if we don't turn up here we're going to take him out so uh, you know we had to bail out of that situation and thankfully the boat was okay. What sort of speeds do you think you were doing? Uh, we would have been doing over 30 at that moment you know you know when you're going quick we never have any time to see how fast we're going but you know we would have been doing 32s and I think Phil was probably doing about the same all of a sudden he's doing 20 so you're going to come at him at 10 knots and um, you know, the steering options on these boats at these kind of speeds are very, very tiny. And, um, you know, that's why I think it's uh, pretty full on over. Yeah, we were actually just uh, coming into fill really quickly. Um, Nate sort of spun up really hard to avoid a collision. Um, but yeah, Glennie got ragdolled on the windward side and I, I got ejected out to lure um, A lot of Gs when we are coming up. I thought we were pretty lucky not to capsize and sharp up like that. Yeah. Trouble. So. What goes through your mind when you when you feel the boat getting out of control like that? Um, mate, it, to be honest, it happened so quick. I was just thinking, oh, I hope I don't get hooked on anything here. Was, um, I was moving through the boat pretty quickly. Um, I think, yeah, if we had it held straight, we would have been straight over the top of them. So um, probably would have been a bit of damage and maybe maybe some injuries. Um, so I think Nate did the right thing. Good, you right. Hey, you good? I'll back down to you. You good, cover? 
here with Glenn, the third member of the Euroflex team. You finally, you've been beaten. Yeah, look, it's you know one of those one of those days. It was it was going to come at some stage or other. Um, you know, pretty top end conditions today. Um, you know, some pretty exciting sailing. So um, we had a bit of a wobble on the on the downwind, and uh, yeah, just got a little bit behind. And uh, you know, with the race finishing you know, a lap or two early, um, you know, made it a bit tough to get back into it again. But um, that's racing, and that's what we're used to. And uh, you know, it was going to happen at some stage. So why not today? I think the racing's been sensational here on the Gold Coast. What are your thoughts? I mean, it's it's narrow, it's tricky, but gee, it's close. It is. It's, it's fantastic yachting and, uh, you know, an iconic venue for, for this type of racing. And I think, um, you know, we're very, very lucky to be able to sail here. Nice one, Glennie. Well, we'll see if we get another racing. Good luck if we do. Yeah, thanks very much. America's Cup winner, Glenn Ashby, there. You can't disagree. It is some fantastic yachting and it's all boating well for the Express Superfoiler Grand Final on Sydney Harbour, where all these boats will come together in the race for the Ben Lexan Trophy. The regatta race is looking like this. After seven races, Euroflex still on top, just four points ahead of Tech 2, with record point two points behind them. And ID still in contention on 25. The race, well, for controversy's sake, certainly belonged to Tech 2 there. Let's find out how Luke Parkinson will defend that one. Parko, you, uh, you got away with the second, but you hooked up with the top mark. Yeah, we're not, uh, we're happy with the second, but we're pretty disappointed in ourselves. You know, we thought we, were, we could have gone one better there. Um, it was a pretty tight race, and you know, this tide, it's tricky, and uh, it's caught us off guard. So what are, the, what are the key issues that we're all facing here with this sort of breeze and tide and speed? What's going on? Uh, the whole race course is on an elevator, basically. So when you're going upwind, it feels like you've got a lot more wind and then uh, the reverse downwind, less pressure. So downwind's pretty tricky, especially for the guys with the smaller jib up. Um, CJ and ourselves have got the big gear up. So, you know, that's helping us downwind and we're holding on to it upwind. So you mentioned the big jib, little jib. Just tell us a little bit about the rig sizes and what range that gives us. So everyone's got the small main up today and uh, everyone in the fleet except ID and Tech 2 have the, uh, the big jib up. Uh, and I think we've gone for the big jib to help us get downwind. It uh, helps the speed build out of the jibes, helps the foiling jibes and we think there's uh, more to lose by being slow downwind than upwind. OK, thanks Parco. Well, good luck for the rest of double points. Yeah, hopefully uh, someone else is in the action for a change and uh, we can slide through under the radar and have a good result. Sounds good. <laughs> And the emotional sea state offshore in the Gold Coast with our sailors. And it was pretty emotional onshore as well, Tess. I can say one of the strangest interviews I've been a part of was when I headed with Fang Warren to a massage parlour. A nice thing to do while you're here on the Gold Coast. A bit of relaxation, a bit of R&R. &R, and Fang will hopefully still talk to me after he sees this story. Hello, nice to meet you. Nick. Fang, nice to meet you. Fang, nice to meet you. Are you ready to get pampered? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come with me, then. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Fang, do you get this wet on the boat? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much? I think five minutes. So, Fang, is this the best possible way you could prepare for a race? Mate, probably nice and Good, isn't it? Fang, how have you gone settling into the team? I mean, you've got two guys on board ID Internet that are both Brits. Have they welcomed you into the fold? Yeah, definitely. It's been good from the get-go. Like, we haven't had much time, but um, I guess there's no time like the present. We just sort of tackle into it and go from there. Any cultural differences or any differences in approaches and attitude? I think the Poms are maybe a little bit more wound up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, a bit like their cricket team. I'm a little bit more laid back, but pretty, um, pretty competitive and brutal at times when I need to be. You started so well in Adelaide. Really, the team to look at some impressive performances and then Geelong, the wheels fell off a bit. How disappointing was that for you guys? Oh, yeah, it was disappointing not being able to sail the last day, but um, I guess just one of those things, you know, you know, you could easily, it could easily not have happened and you could have had a great day. It's not like, I guess you can't get too down about it. And I guess that sport, you just need to come back as strong as you can. How stressful has it been? <laughs> it's just, um, it's been, yeah, quite full on and demanding. Like you need to, there's a lot of boat work required and I guess we haven't really had a day off since we started and, uh, like, but there's light at the end of the tunnel now. Get a day off in two days' time, and then 
back into it in Barcelona, which I'm looking forward to. Talk to me about Busso, because it's not far from your home in Perth. What's going to be so nice about racing close to friends and family? Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully the family make it down there, and a lot of WA yachting community. Hopefully, they get involved as well. I think they'll just be generally interested in the Superfoil. I mean, it's a pretty cool boat, and uh, definitely no boat like that going around in Perth. So everyone will be pretty keen. Fang, you don't have much downtime on the circuit, it's very busy. How do you take your mind off things? Uh, it's a bit hard to at times, it's kind of just full on the whole time, but I guess when you lie down in bed at night, just listen to some music and try and chill out and get up and go again the next day. Talking about music, do you have any music that sort of fires you up before a race goes down or anything like that? How do you get jazzed up? Oh, here we go, thanks Anna. Oh, thank you Anna. Yeah, it's pretty nice down here, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Give it a whirl. Cheers. Oh, what do you think of that? It's nice. It's a, is your tea pink? Yeah, it is. Is that normal? Is this normal? <laughs> I guess it's hard to know what's normal these days, isn't it? <laughs> do you reckon you'll make the start of the regatta? Well, the regatta's already started. But... That's how relaxed I am. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck this weekend. Thanks, Nick. Knock Cheers. him over. I don't think Fang Warren will mind me saying that he does a lot better in the sailing get-up than he does the spa get-up, and he'll be putting his sailing skills to the test after this. The Gold Coast, it's the adventure capital of Queensland and the superfoilers should be set to burn across soon. Let's find out the latest from our race director, Richard. Uh, race teams, race teams, this is race committee. Um, uh, we're obviously monitoring the conditions, bearing in mind that uh, we're over three knots on the tide at the moment, uh, which I think is a significant factor in measuring from the tower in the... Um, uh, the channel, we're measuring 19 to 21 with gusts of 23. The race director there sharing his thoughts. I wonder what the sailors will be thinking. Do they want to race or do they want to stay put? Hey, uh, did you tell them that we're happy as to sail? Yeah. And uh, other teams might do the same. But I think it just looks a lot worse with all the chop, eh? Happy as, a. Eh? That must be our Kiwi on record points. Yesterday was windy up, but it doesn't feel that way. All clear from Steve Thomas on pavement there. Well, yeah. yeah. If it's 14 knots, yes. Jimmy, the sailors sound like they're happy to head back out there. If you were on board, you'd probably be happy, although you might want to do this instead. You're a bit of a kiting fan. Yeah, there's a few kiters out here and a few of the hydrofoiling kites, which is pretty cool to see them. That sport's sort of taking off in the direction as well. Everyone's got foiling fever, but the, the super foilers are going to need a little bit more water than these kite surfer. There's no guarantees on the boundaries. Everyone's sort of sensing how deep it is in front of them, and if they're on the foils, they might push it a little harder. That Joe Cool needs no help, but good help is hard to find. We had to cast the net wide and we invited Juice TV from the Queensland Children's Hospital to hit the launch pad. Hi, my name is Claire. I am 13 years old and I'm super excited to be here in the launch pad. So I'm with Phil and Phil's one of the sailors from overseas. So how is it sailing in Queensland? Yeah, oh, it's, it's pretty hot to be honest. Nah, it's good, it's nice to be in Queensland and yeah, we're looking forward to the week. So now I'm going to go talk to CJ. So is sailing dangerous at all? When you're growing up, it's not too dangerous. These boats are probably the most dangerous boats you can sail. That all kind of adds to the, adds to the fun, you know. So Olivia, how did you start sailing? Um, I started sailing when my uh, older cousin wanted a little crew and I was about six or seven years old. So uh, my family got me into sailing and from there it just kind of took off. So next up, we're going to go talk to Nathan, a gold medalist at the Olympics. Why superfoilers? Like, what is your interest in superfoilers? Uh, these boats are incredibly fast. Um, they require such a high level of skill to sail them and um, the circuit you know is taking us all around Australia. You know what better way to go and see the country and race against some of the best guys in the world. These boats look really fragile are they can they, are they easily breakable? Uh, they can be it just depends how hard you race them. CJ here has broken a fair few st stuff before 
but he pushes them really, really hard. So what was it like winning a gold medal at the Olympics? Nothing's better than, you know, going and representing your country and bringing home a gold medal. So are you afraid of sharks or anything in the water? Yeah, we did actually see a shark out in the water yesterday. Oh. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd much rather not be in the water with them, I'm not going to lie. So how is it being called a world champion sailor? It's been a dream of mine for about 10 years to become world champion and we made it happen. And um, that's a great place to be. I think whenever you achieve your goals, it's a pretty cool thing. And that's the biggest part of it. So in this competition, do you think you'll win? Definitely. I think, you know, we're just finding our stride. So we're, we're improving and um, yeah, stay tuned for this weekend. You look like Chris Hensworth. Really? Just a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> yes. If I shave the beard off, I won't look at anything like him, I promise. <laughs> It was super interesting hearing all the sailor stories. Right now we're out in the water about to watch the superfoiler in action. Whoa, they're like gliding above the water. Oh my gosh. Whoa. That's so, oh my gosh, look how high they are. Whoa, this is so cool. It was incredible, like it was flying. And we were going so fast. Like oh, being on that would have been so scary. Claire from Juice TV there out of the Queensland Children's Hospital, one of the best reporters I've ever seen. And it looks like a pretty good experience down on the VIP boat today. And a reminder, of course, you can snap up some tickets to the Express Superfoiler Grand Final in Sydney. It's coming up very soon. Check out the website below there, superfoiler.com slash events, for all the details. All our sailors will be there. But hopefully that's a while away yet, yeah, Tess. Hopefully more racing is coming up. We can only cross our fingers and wait for more. Cam, Cam, race committee, please could you confirm that all boats are ready to race? Thank you, ready to race. Hey, mate, ready to race. Yeah, flex, ready to race. ID, ready to race. Yeah, look all point ready. Hey, man. Steve's scared, but we're ready to race. All good. <laughs> Copy that. Thank you, David. All the super spoilers are ready to race. Music to my ears, the super foilers are ready. Jack, are the organisers ready to make this happen? Is it safe? It's going to be action packed, Nick. There's uh, still no shortage of wind. The current's still flowing, but we feel it's just settled down enough for us to get a race in. So, as you've heard, most of the teams are pretty, pretty keen to get a race in. So, let's wait and see all the action. By my calculations, Jack, just six points separate Euroflex, Tech 2, and Record Point in the battle for first. How critical is it going to be for those three to one finish and two finish ahead of their nearest rival? Oh, very critical. I mean, it's it's uh, the do, do or die, Nick. So let, that's going to make for an epic battle. Obviously, with the nature of these boats, you're doing 30 plus knots in a tight, narrow waterway. I think. As we've seen in those interviews, it's not so much about the manoeuvres and about managing the boats, it's just the narrow waterway and, and, the, and the thought of having to cross behind one another uh, you know, in, in very tight proximity. So that's the biggest risk. And looking at it now, it looks, it looks raceable. So here we go. That's exactly what we wanted to hear, Jack. Time to go sailboat racing. The superfoilers will be unleashed. Double points on the line, double the fun coming up next. Surfers paradise hasn't yet been a sailor's paradise test. Looks like there's still a bit of movement on those waterways. Yeah, you can see the top mark for this racetrack come into frame. It's just in the middle in the closest waterway there. And the current lines are absolutely ripping. You can see that pattern on the water just showing how much breeze is out there. Going to step up behind your reflex. Getting their position before the start of this race. There's Close, lots of breeze on, so they're going to have to be accurate. And, yep, this is it. Nice. Slow. OK, jump on. Yep. Just jump, just jump. Easing main, ready to attack. Go attacking. Slowly coasting forward. Yeah, yeah agree. Back to jump. You need to Pretty have nice. your bow in line. Pretty much racing here, guys. Above. Yeah, racing above. And go jump now, and main. Racing, boys, go. Racing, time. Go. And their final acceleration. The wind's in the left. 15 seconds to the start. 15 seconds to go here. There's the checkered boy on the middle of your screen. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. More mains, more mains, more mains. More mains. Ease, boys, 
twist. Below the weight. All clear that start, but we've got a penalty here, either on record point or tech two, I think. Hold, 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 hold. Hold. You're going to have to go Trav in the middle now. And main sheet on for the first two tags, OK? Ready to go? Three. Penalty to record Two. point there. Phil One. Robinson's got the penalty. Back to Phil's gym. got the penalty, Jack. What was it for? How did the umpires see it on the water? Uh, Nick, so that was Tech 2 hooking record point at the start. They luffed them up. They didn't keep clear. And uh, as a result, they got a penalty. So they've got a tack twice. So tack and tack, which they've completed. They're now clear to race. And what a race we have on our hands. ID, the winner of the last skirmish, is battling Euroflex at the moment with pavement not far behind. You can hear CJ there on board. ID asked to sail a high mode. They're in a. They've got to keep that windward position relative to Euroflex. Getting close to the boundary line. There we go. Fang Warren on main sheet there, sending it through to the other side of the boat. He looks suitably relaxed there. That massage has paid dividends for Fang as they continue to battle for first place here. So here we go, CJ's pretty wicked up there on Port Tack out to the right hand side and he's leading Euroflex out to that side which is a good sign he's going to come back off that boundary with right so he's going to have the power in his hand here as he comes back onto starboard tack. These guys are pushing the boat so hard, they're very controlled. Push this boundary now boys. Like left shift from before, so. Pushing the boats there Tess and also pushing the limits of our very Condensed racetrack here as Fang Warren looks behind to check out the progress of our front runner in this double points race. It's almost the harder you push the boats, the more control yes. you've got. Hey. Almost balletic, they move through the ID and into position. They're making that top mark easily there. They're on a nice run into the top. Euroflex tacking to windward, pavement pretty close behind. You can see the top mark, that white mark, they're going to turn around it to the left to port. Shades of Adelaide test where these two went toe to toe in some of those races and pavement prowling in position, ready to pounce. And what about this little battle between record points and tech two? They both are close, just as they were on the start. One. Pavement struggle to rip away. Lured hull dragging there. Now they're up on the foils. Getting soft. I think we go soon. Anytime. Two, one, here we go. So not much breeze in, really close to the shore. That won't matter for Nathan Outeridge on the helm here. He's so attuned to the weather conditions. Not so sure if he's attuned to the anniversary conditions. Given he spent his anniversary with his wife Emma watching the Superfoiler racing at home. He'll have this on a, again at Wanji, I'd imagine. It's another masterclass. It seems to be all happening out there on the Gold Coast waterways at this very moment. Yeah, away. What do you think about that four down here? Yep. 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 A little bit of lift before the jibe. Okay, any time. Everyone's getting around pretty cleanly at the moment. I can see they're sailing a little bit more conservatively. They got around the, the bear away. Uh, quite on uh, low, not they didn't fly too high, and they've got all four foils down. So they're just managing it at the moment and keeping it clean, as I said. So uh, ID very much in touch. Hold Everyone's on. still pretty close. So we might see a couple of the boats let it rip in their third laps. Three. More sheet, Fangy, more sheet. Help him, Eddie, help him. CJ calling. More main sheet, more power here. It's critical that you get the boat at the right angle when the breeze hits. There's such big gusts out there, you've got to be ready for them. Bow down, sheet on. Yeah, another big ventilation there. It's really hard to keep these boats dialed in. You see CJ just getting absolutely carted down the boundary there and he's going to be taking metres out of Euroflex. He's going to go for a dive here in a second. He's just on the boundary. Nathan just getting dialed in and pavement pulling off a really nice job in the top of your screen there. That's awesome work by them, and they're taking a huge chunk out of that lead as well. So they're, they're not holding back, they're chasing down the metres. There's such a decision to be made whether to jive in the pressure lines or take the boat all the way to the boundary. And we're very close to survival mode here, so there's a lot on on board to comprehend. 
Copy that. Tech two also closing yeah. distance here. Got the post. Stand by. Three, two, one, wait forward. We can see both crew going in front of the mast. That's their new diving technique. As we see Euroflex turn the mark. Okay, building here. Attacking in 10, good. Okay. We're on to the second upwind. Getting close to this boundary line. And their object to follow pavement here. Quite a slow manoeuvre as you see them just get stuck trying to get downwind here, but they've actually managed to keep it on the foils there. They've done an epic job getting around that mark. That was almost a full U foiling U-turn. And they've just both overtaken ID. So ID from second into fourth here. They've been had it not very good downwind at all, obviously stuck in a big lull. And pavement, they've tacked on the boundary. The port tacks, the long tack on this upwind. The wind is in the left, so they should have a good run at it. The more distance these boats have got, the more speed they can build and really get it happening. There we go, fly out of the air. They're up and foiling. And record point, jiving into the bottom marks. Where is it? This race is still anyone's. It's very much alive. Tech 2 rocketing along. They've got Euroflex in their sights. Pavement 2. And Steve Thomas steering pavement. His hand on the rudder buttons there, controlling the lift in the foil to keep the hull at stable height above the water. And on the main sheet here, Rhys Mara working hard to get the boat on top of them, keep the windward heel as they power out to the right. Not far from the boundary line. Not if you forget it, just come. Yeah, look, they'll be doing 20 knots easily upwind here. They've really got a dial, and I think they've come back out on starboard here, and they might have a piece of Euroflex. They might have the advantage. Great ball drop from Lockie Gilmore. Unclead it, Lock. Unclead it. But Steve wants more from yeah, him. Sorry, cancel that. Sorry. Stand by. He's a new arrival to the pavement and doing well. Very close to the top mark ley line for the second time. Euroflex with a comfortable lead and on board ID. They've got awesome speed on the upwind there. Ed Powers trimming the traveller at the bow. You can see just how quick these boats are going, Nick. Look at that angle. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all from Paul Campbell James. Three, two, one, put it in the bank. Two, one, go board. It's intense racing, Tess. This really does feel close as we actually step through the boat there with Luke Parkinson, it's such a unique experience. Oh, your boat handling just has to be right on your game to be able to sail in these conditions. You know, you need good speed, but you've also got to be able to handle the boat and control the power. Listen to the purr of the super foiler. Nice work. I agree, Reese. Great work there. Look how quickly they've closed on Euroflex. Yeah, so you can see these guys really holding on around these top marks. That lured hull really wants to dig in, and any lured heel can easily cartwheel the boat and bring you completely unstuck here. The sensation on the boat's just like you're flying. It's Once you're up in the air and you're travelling at such top speeds, you've got to get that bow at the right height so it doesn't dig into the water. And They've rounded the top mark on board ID. I'm not sure if they've got something wrong with their foils. It looks like they're having trouble getting getting up. Maybe it was from hitting the mark earlier. I'm not sure, Nick. Copy that. Sorry, take me off. Ray coming out. Amazing to think there was hesitation about racing. We see how close they are at the moment. Pavement's in second, 19 seconds behind yeah. Euroflex. Tech 2 and ID, you yeah, could cover them with a tablecloth. The but yeah, getting ever so softer. And the breeze is actually dying out there, according to Nathan Outeridge as well. Happy to go any time for this pressure. Right in near the boundary, the wind gets light, so they've got to jive before the lull. Yeah, absolutely, and you see pavement here doing really well downwind. Tech 2 just struggling with that jibe. You can see that click more pressure making everything harder and harder. Haven't done much sailing in this breeze. They don't know their settings. They don't know how the boat's going to react, so they're all learning on the fly here. Little bit of 
How long to lay? I think we're at lay. Bit of, bit of speed. Goob's on go. the front just trimming that okay. windward foil. He's got the ability to trim that foil. Nathan can't move that. He's got the traveller line in his hand. And you can see they have a lot of traveller down, a lot of main twist. Very different setup to a lot of other boats there. Should get a little let down. Calling that as that more pressure hits, they can sail lower towards the mark. Help me with the board in a second. You can see the bottom marks come into the picture. Nice here. Euroflex on lay line into the bottom on their final approach. Wait boards. Nice guys. Okay, we're going to be one of them right there. Cobby, you call it Sam. Yeah, he's not a bad angle there. He might have gone to stand too far. Okay, stand by. Hang on, slow here, really slow. Two, one, driving. Bad drive, I think. Turning it two. Steve Thomas and the boys on pavement have things well choreographed until a little splash down there. They've still got a little buffer there in second place behind Euroflex. But Tech 2, very much closing in on them and those little mistakes could prove to be hugely costly as Tech 2 close it down here. So much going on in the roundup. You don't want to have too much lift in the foils because you need traction with the hull to the water to make that turn. As soon as you steer the boat up above that power zone, that traveller's got to come in quick to get the main and the centre line to sail upwind. Yeah, three strings, low hooks for these boys. You can see fully shoulders back doing everything they can to pull the boat down and keep the power up. And Nathan just got his head perched up. He's looking upwind. He's looking at the puff he's about to sail into. And he's just flying the boat, you know, without even thinking about it. He doesn't have to look at the buttons he needs to push. He just plays them in his hand without thinking. He's just steering the boat through the breeze like a normal boat. They've just put 100 metres on pavement there. That was an incredible speed build. A little inside puff coming. And it could be something to do with Glenn Ashby lying down like Fang on a massage table. Sorry, I still think four board is great. Great communication in the windy conditions. You can see how proactive they are in organising as a team what they're going to do before they get into situations. Happy any timing with the current. We'll just milk it a little further. Okay, here we go. And there's no surprises on board. Every move they do is being discussed beforehand. And Nick, they're connecting the dots, the pressures together, and sailing so slick around this course. It's incredible. I once played Connect Four with Ian Jensen, and he beat me in three moves. That's how strategic these guys are. They see everything in fast forward, and they just seem to always be Tess at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. Nice amount of windward heel around that mark. Full control. They're on the final leg now. They can taste victory here on the Gold Coast. You good? A little build and then a jive, okay? So much so, they needed to cool things down for a brief right, moment. seconds this way and we'll be okay. The boats have got three foot straps on board. You can see the guys there helping them hang on. The windier it is, the more you need to lock your feet in so you're really attached to the boat. Stand by, two, one, and touch. Yeah, they're being really particular with their modes here, what they choose to sail upwind with, and just a little bit of lured heel, digging that bow under here, and the boat just launches straight up onto the foils there. Need weight out, Lock. Steve Thomas, it looks like he's got it sewn up, but Tech 2 are closing in. Got a jump. Oh, close port, starboard. You really can't afford to go to sleep at any stage. That was super close. Euroflex on port had to give way. I can just pass the red boy. And these super foilers are in takeoff, blast off mode. This is how close they were there, and it all happened so very quickly. This is almost panic stations right now for Paul Campbell. James, evasive manoeuvres required, and thank goodness. Got a job here, got a job. <laughs> got a job. These guys will always have an exit route if they need it. Sorry, I just saw them at the end. Nathan Outeridge, I gave him praise. 
Think we're sucking on the women board? And then all of a sudden he sleeps up, very uncharacteristic. Come in and jog. Turning this is by. looking like a little Two. more normal, closing in on another victory for Euroflex. Our race leader Euroflex closing in on another win, a bounce back after their earlier defeat today. They're closing in and they've got a cushion over pavement. Okay, I'm coming up. Oh. On. Just on now. Steve Thomas is chasing hard. Just on left angle. He hasn't yielded yet. Take up top. Is this to finish? Yes. Okay. Good work. Heaps of pressure out there. These guys have got so much on. One, and here we go. Looking at the margin that Euroflex holds over pavement, it is considerable, 250 metres plus. Too far, probably, for pavement. But Steve Thomas is tenacious and will chase. Starboard at the moment, they'll be on foot. Stand by, go before him. Two. Pavement rolling it into a jive. One. A lot of the boat handling is just about keeping stability and control over the boat in these strong winds. And look at that for a visual. These guys on Euroflex are absolutely scorching. Okay, bodies in. Yeah, get the bodies inside and get the seat belts on. Nice work, guys. Nice work, lads. And there's the finish pin coming to screen, that well black and white mark. Schnitzel right there. <laughs> That's the schnitzel, Glenn. It's the whole chicken. Well done. It's a roast from those guys on the Gold Coast. That was full on today. Nice work in the second. Yeah. Just the one race dropped. All the others belong to them. As pavement race for second, they're burning towards that finishing marker. And Tech 2 chasing in third. Here we go, taking off. Stevie's got another drive in yep. the Stand by drive. Yes. Three, two, two one, and driving. And coming down to the finish, not far off at pavement on their final drive. Yep. Wait out, lot. Little ease on the tube, you can. Max, wait out to build speed out of the drive so they can Stand get depth. And there's the finish boat in screen and the horn Sorry, there. Mate, she was around my head. I was all chicken when we got there. And high spirits on board pavements. Yes, boys! Here we go. Yes! OK, putting her in the water, gents. But that pales in comparison... Oh. Mate, this rudder's cooked, eh? ..to the enthusiasm on Good Tech 2. There. We could have gone hard, but it wasn't worth it. Nice, mate, nice. That's it. Shows that we deserve that second there as well, you know? Yeah. They deserve that, just ask them, Tess. Yeah, they've done a great job. Risk management's everything in these conditions. Got above the post. Everyone hear me? Yeah. And on board ID, they're on their final approach. They may have damage to their foils as well. Where are we going here? To the left, stand by. Or is it finished? Finish. OK, stand by, one more jibe. Three, two, one, jibing now. It's been a day to remember for IT. They scored their first ever win in the Super Foiler Series, and now they are closing in on a fourth position for the final double points race here on the Gold Coast. And that finish line just coming into screen as they glide down through that ley line. And well done, awesome job to all yeah. these teams to get around the course. So, my bed, my bed, my bed, my bed. On board record oh, right, right, right. point. Ah. Oh, a bit of a touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Sorry, boys, that's all me. Okay, twist and we're two and it. Phil just apologising, a bit of a mistake on the lift control of the foils. Two. One. And rolling into a jibe, they've called it to and in. Two more jibes to get down to the finish. A great moment for record point, particularly their Kiwi skipper racing in front of his mum and dad for just the second time. They've travelled across the ditch to watch record point. Why don't any boys power, powering up? Oh, where's the puff? Trying to stay in the pressure. 
Okay, let's go. Round the front here, round the front, round the front, round the front. Stomp it down. Nice one, boys. Nice work. And there they're through the finish. I'll play this spot. Nah, that's a shame to end like that. All good, boys. Oh, well. Nice work, nice good nice event, work. eh? Yeah. Good event. Nice work. Yeah. Just feel. We're, we're so soft, there's some last one. We're just not now. clinching. Um, I don't, think, I don't think you have much pressure for it. Yeah. Neil Hunter leading the post-mortem there as we see Olivia Price, Harry Morton and Josh McKnight come screaming to that finish line. See how hard it is to have stable flight in these rough conditions. Harry Morton moved through the bow. Clip up out on the wire. The sooner you can get the crew on the wire, the better control you'll have over the boat. Very narrow boundaries they're racing in here. And a reminder, Tess, why they call it the Gold Coast. It looks like gold from above and Clean Made will be happy with their smelting effort this weekend. They did have some really good finishes. This one, not one of their best, but Olivia Price has already vowed to be faster and more furious come Bustleton. Trying to lure it over? Yeah. These big channel marks, not easy to navigate around. Had to sail a low mode there just to get around that mark, so they'll come up now in their rebuild speed. Amazing to think we've come from those howling winds to an evaporating whimper of a breeze. It makes sailing so difficult in these high performance superfoilers. But well done to Olivia. She crosses five minutes and 20 seconds behind the almighty Euroflex. Making it across. <laughs> yeah. All righty, well done, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you enjoying the racing. Enjoying the racing test, but they do need improvement on those high fives. They've got a long way to go there. We could give them some lessons, I think, Nick. Coordination is definitely our thing, Tess. So, probably not so much lemonade in that race. Not so much lemonade. Ooh, bit of a code word there, lemonade. Sorry? I can think of another drink with bubbles. It's champagne and it's time to crack that open after the end of race number eight. Euroflex taking it out 16 minutes and four seconds. That was a pacey one there. Pavement closing out second, a minute and seven behind, and really nothing between them and Tech 2, who closed out third. Record point, a really great performance from them. They were stung at the start of the race with a penalty, but they fought back to claim fifth position. Nice job from Phil Robertson and his crew. Plenty to celebrate from Neil Hunter and Sam Phillips there. They'll make the most of the Gold Coast delights as we look at how the regatta unfolded. Euroflex has claimed their third straight. Adelaide, Geelong, now the GC, all in their possession. 50 points made to work a lot harder than they have been in any other regatta. Tech 2 on the podium in second this time, an improvement for them with pavement rounding it out. Tess Parkinson, as we look at the skyline here and the beach lapping along the shorefront there, it's a beautiful view and we've seen some beautiful numbers too eked out around the course this weekend, starting of course with the distance sailed. Yeah, Nick, this is one of the most challenging courses we've had in our Grand Prix series so far, and that's reflected through the distance sailed. You can see Euroflex, the race winner, sailed the least amount of distance, followed by Tech 2, then by ID. So not much in it there at all, and it made a huge difference on that narrow boundary course. The more you could minimise your distance, you could minimise your manoeuvres and make it a life a lot easier for yourself to get around the track. Certainly gets the sweat going, though. So many manoeuvres required to to sail a short distance and at the end of the day it's all about the average speed too isn't it and no surprises here really Euroflex again the fastest on average. Yeah getting around the racetrack and winning races is about sailing the shortest distance in the fastest average speed so you can see that trade-off between these numbers and interestingly they're on team ID with the highest max speed overall, followed by pavement. There's not much in it, but the speeds these guys are tracking, Nick, 27.66 knots. That is insane speed they're reaching in such short runways on the narrow track course. 
It sure is muy caliente from Paul Campbell James and the guys 28 almost knots. He'll be spinning yarns to all his mates on Ben Ainsley racing in the America's Cup. They'll be loving those kind of numbers from him. It is super impressive. And it was a super impressive regatta from our series leader as well. Euroflex did it again. And Jack McCartney has an interview with those boys again. So a bit of deja vu lads. That's uh, three in a row. Uh, fantastic effort again. Bit tougher to uh, get this one over the line, though. No. Yeah, it was pretty fresh today, and um, yeah, we had a big mishap in that first one, trying to avoid a, a record point just ahead of us, and sort of sent us into a bit of a frenzy. But you know, happy to get that last race in and uh, finish, you know, where we belong up on top. You look pretty under control around that last race, Glenny. What was going on? Oh yeah, no, totally, uh, totally under control there. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's loose yachting. Um, it might look under control, but um, I guarantee that anyone that comes and sits in our chair will be uh, getting the ride of their life. That's for sure. <laughs> Goobs in the bow. Oh, bit of a breakage there, but it's nothing major. Uh, Goobs, all good in the bow. How was that down that down that run? A bit of porpoising, a bit of action. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh... When the pitch changes a lot, it's quite hard to uh, set, the, set the rake on the boards to fly you steady, so we had a bit of porpoise action going on. But, um, yeah, it was good fun, and uh, in the end of the day, I think it was great that we got that race away. Um, good action and close racing. It's good. So were you guys aware that the points were quite close and that if you'd finished fourth, there was a chance you might have lost that one? I uh, wasn't really thinking about the points, to be honest. We were just trying to get the vessel around in one piece, and, uh, you know, we, we did a great job in that last race. and. Um, you know, as Gooby and Glennie were saying, it, it might have looked easy, but it was really difficult, really hard to sail these boats. Uh, you know, such a short space, we would have loved to have lifted that windward board and got it going downwind, but, um, you know, we only had enough time to jive before we had to go back even with both boards down. So, uh, you know, happy, happy to take another win and looking forward to the next event in Bustleton. Well done, guys. In terms of raising the board, they've raised the level and they'll be half expecting to raise the Ben Lexon Trophy because they have a perfect start to our Grand Prix. Three wins, 18 points. All these scores build up to the final and it is really a dream start. Tech 2's close things up. Their level on pavement, but still statistically, record point ID and clean made, very much still in contention. <laughs> and Glenn letting the bubbles pour across the superfoiler there, the Euroflex. They've had plenty to celebrate here from the Gold Coast. The celebrations will long continue, no doubt about that. But they can't go for too long because we're travelling 4,500 kilometres to the other side of Australia where we'll pick up the first races from Bustleton. Got a job here, got a job. <laughs> got a job. No one's blinking at the moment. Someone's got to shut their eyes. Sorry, I just saw them again. Sorry, thank you, Alright. From one side of the country to the other, we're on the west coast of Australia here. The iconic waterways of Bustleton welcoming the circuit, although it wasn't the welcome that our series leader Euroflex would have been hoping for. On Friday, the front runner suffered some serious damage and understandably the series leader was pretty upset their skipper hard to console. Our boat fell apart today in training. Um, Looks like the rudder broke. Um, the stock between the top bearing and the bottom bearing has snapped. And then uh, when that happened, it 
went outboard, went through the side of the hull and sort of looks like a can up and it's gone down the side of the boat. Uh, we, we just were out there training this morning, we did a bear away and about 10 seconds after the bear away we just heard a loud cracking noise and I just looked out the back and the windward rudder had folded inboard towards the centre hull um, and still had steerage and guys were still on trapeze. Um, so we just slowed the boat down and tried to round up to stop it. Um, and at that point, that was when we saw all the additional damage to what we thought was just the rudder breaking initially. Yeah, we are basically just bearing away. Yeah, just sort of accelerating through the turn, just as per normal, um, straightening up. We just heard, started hearing a cracking noise and then you know, saw the back of the boat sort of explode as we were um, squaring up to go downwind. So that sound and that feeling when you're on trapeze especially uh, is not ideal. So Goobs and I sort of quickly got ourselves in um, before the boat sort of spun out and um, you know, managed to sort of save the capsize. Yeah, look, obviously, you know, massively disappointing. You know, we're just out for a, for a training sail. Um, beautiful conditions here in Bustleton. Flat water, 15 knots, sun's out. It just doesn't get any better for yachting. And, uh, yeah, to have the, the, the rudder stock fail and blow out the side of the uh, the float hull at the back there is, you know, really disappointing. Because we're looking forward to a fantastic, uh, you know, series of races here this weekend. They're fragile, high-performance craft, and um, you know things are on the edge, and um, that's also the beauty about the sailing. You know that's uh, that's what we like about sailing these types of boats. But um, you know things that are on the edge, sometimes uh, you know you go over that edge at times, and um, structurally that's just one that uh, I don't think anyone could foresee, and just unfortunate. But we'll uh, we'll play on. This place is a fantastic place for sailing. You know we we're out there yesterday and today having a good time, and it's going to be. You know, frustrating watching, you know, everyone race over the weekend and, you know, I'm sure the boat builders are going to assess this and see if they can fix it in time, but, um, you know, I, I think it's a big task to get it ready, so, uh, yeah, we'll just have to put our eyes forward to Sydney. Nathan Outeridge is the new Tom Cruise. That sounds like Mission Impossible, Tess. They're not on the start line for Friday's racing. We've got five super foilers out on Bustleton Water. They're off the start. We're into race one. As you can see, the boats do their first tack off the line. And Fang Warren on main sheet. Walking. Kinley Fowler on bow, on board ID. These guys are smoking it. These might be some of the windiest conditions we've seen the boats race in. Oi! Oi! Tech two, accelerating Go towards ID. Hold, hold! Tech two in the thick of the commotion, just for a change as they go high and plant it. Wow, heaps of lift. He's, tra he's traveller, he's trav. Hold on, Aiden. Rounding up. Yeah, it's all right, ready? I'll give you a hand. Here? Come here, man. Back out of here. Copy that. Luke um, Parkinson's a West okay, Aussie. Out on the other board, guys. Familiar with these waters and familiar with chaos. That was a nice job to save that capsize. Now get the windward board up here, sheet on and go. Stand by bearing away. The all clear was given as we see Reese Mara riding through on pavement and grabbing the tiller there. The Bustleton jetty is a natural boundary on this course, forcing the guys to tack back to the middle and sail into the centre of the water here as they head up towards the top mark. Head trapping. They're screaming, Steve Thomas, another native to these parts. He's got it wicked up. A little too much as they go rocketing round the front. Not quite enough lift in the bow. Wow, they go catapulting around the front. Let's hope everyone's OK, Tess. That happened really quickly. Acceleration of these boats is so intense when that bow digs in the water. They go from 35 knots to stopped in less than five seconds. So that you can see the jet ski coming into frame. Let's hope everyone's all right. Oh, I'm a bit concussed. <laughs> yeah. Right. Steve Thomas, Reese Mara, and uh, Dan Morris's legs all accounted for there. Yeah, that's fine. This is Oh, oh Tess, a bit of drama early on here in Bustleton, and no surprise, race abandoned. My helmet hit the, my head hit the board. <laughs> that was pretty full on. We're going downwind, and um, it was pretty gusty. A few boats around, a bit of chop, and. Yeah, we got a little bit high on the foil, and then um, 
yeah, runners were starting to get a bit wild on me and I was basically just struggling to stay on the boat. Next thing I know, we were, we were capsized. Oh, I think I went forward. I must have hit the board on my way through. Was, kind of can't remember <laughs> what happened before that. Boat get a little bit loose and next thing you know, you're in the air. And the horizon's just flying by faster than you can recognise. And once, once it got loose and once we went off the boat, there was no idea what's happening. All I could see was just a blur of colors and just, just waiting, waiting for impact. <laughs> just happy that uh, everyone's safe and the boat's good, and no serious damage. So every day you go out there and people come back healthy, it's all good. <laughs> Pavement pointing back towards the sky. She'll be flying. More racing coming up in Bustleton. Who's going to hit the first Bustleton bullseye? Race one was scratched. We'll have another crack test. Yeah, one lap wasn't completed by any of the boats before the capsize from pavement. So we're restarting race one and you can see the boats just setting up, preparing on board. Yes, please. I need some sort of salt or sugar or something. Get cracked. That's Paul Campbell James, the Brit finding it hard to cope with this West Aussie heat. They almost look like you've been eating them. And Hugh, their support team, throwing them some lollies. Mate, we're easy to do best in these conditions. Easily. Bit of confidence on board deck too. Yeah, that's unusual for Luke. He's usually the retiring shy type, but uh, calling it like he sees it there. Fantastic as we're ready to get underway racing here. We're off the start. All boats on starboard and pavement down in the leeward position. They've come back fighting from this capsize and on board ID, they love the strong wind. And what a close battle we've got here between Tech 2, Pavement and ID on this downwind as ID, windward foil down. Two, one, eight, two. Oh, and Sam Newton goes into the water. You all right? Hold on, Sambo. Grab him in the back, grab him in the back. Good recovery. Okay, stand by drive, slow drive here. Two, one, driving. Nice guys, here we go. Good recovery after Sambo went slambo as we see ID and record point going for each other here. And record points in the lead in this picture here, followed by pavement and then ID who are out close to the Bustleton jetty. On board record point, on the downwind. And Reese Mara, main sheet of pavement, working the main such gusty conditions here. They've got to work that main sheet in and out to get stability in the boat, to get the boat driving fast. Big pressure builds out on the course and record point, they've just overtaken pavement. Phil Robertson still milking the lead here. Go trap down, bro. Tech two, they look to have overlaid the top mark slightly here, coming in with a bit of lured heel. Oh, and Tech 2 digging again, and Sam and Aiden. You all right? Go flying once more. It's a shocker here. Three laps, bro, but yeah, I think he had a shocker. Oh, is he going to go over? Oh, he's going to save it. Luke's hanging on to the trapeze there, trying to save this capsize. It's a grunty kind of effort on Tech 2 as record point will enjoy the spoils of victory. Oh, nice work, boys. Well done, mate. Yeah. yeah, look, we were real happy, eh? It was, um, yeah, obviously a good day, and we've had a great day yesterday training and this morning as well, and we're just feeling a lot more confident and comfortable in the boat and getting the hang of it. So, um, yeah, we're clearly feeling a lot better out there in the bigger breeze, and it's nice. We're, we're welcoming it and wishing we could do more in it. So, yeah, bring on the big breeze, and we'll keep trying to send it. Look, there's two ways you can sail it. You can sail it loose and fast and the consequences are very high and I think we saw that today with the gold boat and um, we probably sailed it a bit more safe and kept it steady and I guess just kept the averages really high as opposed to peaking at 37 and then hitting zero pretty quickly after that. I think in the first race we thought we were sailing conservatively but you never know and uh, we were very conservative in the second race and just, just kept her upright and took second. 
I've experienced the same thing as the gold boat probably in my second sail on the boat and yeah, it kicks you back into reality really. So um, yeah, look, keeping it safe is number one and keeping your boys safe on board is key and um, that sort of was our mode today, a little bit safer and yeah, keeping the foils in the water was key. <laughs> We definitely didn't sail a very clean race at all. It was pretty scrappy and messy and manoeuvres weren't beautiful. So, yeah, you're always trying to improve. So that's the goal tomorrow. As my dad taught me, they're not always pretty, but they do count. And that's surely the case there for Phil Robertson. Not a great looking win, but a win all the same. 26 minutes and nine seconds ahead of pavement. They were just 22 seconds adrift with Tech 2 scrambling into third position. As we know, Euroflex unable to make it to the start line for race one in Bustleton. They'll be racing the clock just to make it for the rest of the weekend. On behalf of the entire commentary team, thanks for your company. We'll see you next week from Bustleton.